against what came right before you. So what came right before Andy was a very hands-on, passionate, hard-drinking, meaning of life, meaning of uh, art, you know, the serious conversation. So to react against that, Andy did the exact opposite, which was to be like, oh, I don't do anything. I do nothing. It's as though the art just appears. And so really that was like, that was a stance that he took. It was a game. It was, it's the art game. Uh, when I get begin to work on something, I uh, usually takes me a minute to do. He did have a great ability to let go and go, oh, you do it. But you could rest assured if he didn't like it later, he would take it back and try and rework it and fix it and get more control. So Warhol could be hands-on or hands-off. Back in Manhattan, I went to see another of Andy's old friends, Sam Green. In 1965, he curated this event, Andy's first ever retrospective. You might think the artist's signature on a work counts for something, but with Andy, you'd be wrong. If you don't want to be confused even further, turn away now. He asked me what image to make for his, the poster for his retrospective, and he said, oh, I don't know, just do anything. And I said, Andy, you have to choose an image, something that you've done before. And he said, well, like what? And I'd say, oh, it can be soup cans, it can be dollar bills, it can be green stamps, it can be Maryland's, it can something, pick something. He said, well, maybe we should do green stamps because that's your name. And I said, okay, well, then how do we do it? And he said, well, you make a silk screen of green stamps and that's a poster. And then I had to sign them all, Andy Warhol, because he decided not to sign his work that year. In fact, that was the year he applied to the Library of Congress to have his name officially changed to John Doe. So he wasn't going to sign anything. So it is actually my signature, Andy Warhol, 1965, that authenticates a Warhol as being real. That's a bit contradictory. How can it authenticate the Warhol when you're Sam Green, you're not Andy Warhol? Because Andy Warhol delegated the responsibility to me of making his art. Well, he said to you, hey, you do it, Sam, that's a good idea, and you sign it. Uh, yes. Sign it, Andy Warhol. What's it like, your Andy Warhol signature? Well, I can show it to you. I think I can remember how I did it. It's pretty sloppy, but easy. Is, is that authentically an Andy Warhol signature? Uh, by my definition of Andy Warhol's work, it is. That's pretty complicated, isn't it? It's, the whole thing is very complicated. I've heard that Sotheby's will authenticate an SNH green stamp poster if it has my forged signature on it. If it isn't, if somebody else has forged the signature, then it's not an Andy Warhol. <laughs> Remember this was in an era where Marcel Duchamp, who was someone that I introduced Andy to, was making um, his ready mates. It was something that was in the air, that art wasn't necessarily valuable because of who made it and whose signature was on it, but because it was an image that had a validity. Even if it's mass produced and not touched by Andy, it is nevertheless his concept which gives it value. Did Andy care about authorship? Andy cared about authorship only in that if he made it, he could sell it. And if he sold it, he'd get the money which he wanted. Exactly 40 years after that first retrospective, Dear Beacon in upstate New York has staged a Warhol show around this permanent installation. 78 shadow paintings. Every picture here is a genuine Warhol, even if they weren't his idea. And he was a very good listener, and he asked for help, and he asked for advice. Uh, and he would listen to what people would say. For example, the shadows was my idea. But I didn't paint the shadows, and he painted the shadows. I didn't feel... Um, hurt by it or, you know, ripped off by it. It was an idea that I would never use and gave it to Andy and he utilized it really well. Warhol's original dealer 
Ivan Karp, remembers Andy's reticence only too well. He used to ask me all the time, oh, Ivan, what, what, what should I paint? Well, what should I do? He asked everybody he knew. I know, I think it was Henry Gelsell who, whose idea was to paint flowers. I give him the idea for cows. I told him, paint cows, cows, it's an important fertility symbol. You can't miss with cows. Instead of making paintings, he made 5,000 sheets of wallpaper. We sold nothing at the time. If Andy recognized a good idea when he heard it, he was also happy, if the occasion was right, for passers-by to contribute their own unique brushstrokes to his work. The politely titled oxidation paintings were a case in point. There were these big lunches at the factory, and, and which were enormous fun because the mixture of people was so, was so crazy. And he would say in that sort of, oh gosh, uh, does anybody want him to take a piss, take a leak? And um, he'd say, because if they do, there's this copper plate, and you, would you mind doing the next room? And, um, and of course, people were thrilled. So you went into the next room and, and yeah. peed on the copper plate? Yes. There are two or three by me. I don't know. They're now um, valuable works of art. Piss paintings, uh, I think uh, they're called. Well, piss paintings, yes. And um, so um, I tried to do arabesques. Uh, you know, I tried to do pointillism and... and um, <laughs> they had a kind of nice Jackson Pollocky look, some of them. Meanwhile, Joe Simon has arrived in town and he's taking me to see his painting, which now hangs in the offices of his lawyer, Peter Stern, on Madison Avenue. Hi, Peter. Hey, Joe. Oh, how's um, it going? Alan, this is my solicitor, hey. Peter Stern. Good to meet you. It's Alan. Hi. And this is um, Andy Warhol, made in uh, July of 1965. So that's a really early one. Yeah, really early. How did you get involved, yeah. Peter? Uh, Joe came to me in about 2001 because he was in the process of selling the painting. Unfortunately, uh, about three weeks later, the committee rejected it. And that started a little saga. Can we see the picture, Peter? Sure. sure. <clears throat> And uh, on the back is the rejection uh, twice by the committee. They physically actually stamp the canvas. So this is a canvas which, you know, is, its value has substantially been reduced simply by having that denied, actually stamped on the back of the canvas. They deface the picture. How can they possibly justify doing that, Peter? It's part of the agreement that they force people to sign when they submit a picture in the agreement, it says that they can mark the p painting. On this as well, there's a Fred Hughes authentication, is there? Yeah, early... before I bought it, I actually rang Fred Hughes and asked him about the picture, and he told me he remembered authenticating it, and he told me that it was a very good picture and, and you know, encouraged me to buy it. And Fred, yeah. at the time, Fred would have been the person most qualified to authenticate anyway, given how long he'd been with Warhol. Yes, yeah, since 1967. He was executor of Warhol's estate. He owned an image himself, but on linen. Um, he was the authentication board. He was the dealer for the foundation at the same time. I mean, he was every, every, the head of Andy Warhol. Uh, on this side, the certification from Fred Hughes, which you can read. I certify that this is, this is an original painting by Andy Warhol, completed by him in 1964. Mm -hmm. Frederick Hughes, and then there's another stamp. The two Andy Warhol stamp signatures. When you say stamp signature, what does that mean? It's a, it's, a stamp, it's a signature that was a stamp. Because most of Andy's pictures weren't signed, were they? No, most no, of them were just no, stamped. No. They weren't signed until they were about to be sold. Right. None of that seems to matter to the committee. Uh, it doesn't seem to. Um, Would anyone dare buy that now for its real market value, having seen that it's, been, uh, that it's got a, a dismissal from the authentication committee? Well, basically, this particular painting today has uh, decorative value. Uh, <laughs> it, it really... That's a uh, euphemism. It's, a <laughs> it's got no value then. Next to no value. The authentication board works in complete secrecy and isn't obliged to explain its decisions, why it deems a work authentic or not. And when you submit a work, 
the waiver you sign not only negates any previous authentications, but gives you no right